स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडेज लेक्चर इन द लास्ट लेक्चर we started discussing some approximate methods in quantum mechanics using which we can solve those problems which are which do not have an exact solution in particular we are talking about the systems where we have more than one electrons for example any uh, atom with more than il one electron or for that matter any molecule with more than uh, any molecule having uh, elect uh, electron more than one in those cases we cannot find exact solution of the uh, schrodinger equation and we first looked at the one of those methods known as variational principle in this principle we discussed that suppose we have a hamiltonian whose exact ground state psi 0 and whose exact ground state energy e 0 we do not know in that case we can what we can do is that we can make a guess we can define a trial function we call that phi and evaluate an energy corresponding to this trial function and we call this trial function as e phi what variational principle guarantees me is that this energy that you we get out of this trial function we call that e phi is always going to be greater than or at the best it is equal to e0 or the ground state energy so when e phi is equal to e0 to that limit the phi that the, the guess or the trial function that we have taken is representative of the true ground state solution or the true ground state wave function psi 0 so in the limit that e phi goes to e0 our phi the trial function becomes a psi 0 or the ground state function so this is what variational principle told us then the procedure that we would apply very uh, using with will using which will uh, apply variational principle is as follows we will define the trial function and we will define a variable in this trial function that will we would call alpha so phi will be a function of alpha just to remind you so if i say phi is a function of alpha therefore e phi so when i do calculate this integral so you would see that i would integrate all other functions and then i will be left with e phi will be a function of alpha now i know that e phi the trial energy is always going to be greater than e0 so if i can minimize this e phi with respect to alpha and solve this equation then i can find at what value of alpha this equation holds good and i call that value of alpha as the alpha minimum once i have this alpha minimum what does it tell me that this value of alpha corresponds to the lowest energy given the trial function you have so therefore i put this uh, alpha minimum into my phi function so this becomes my best uh, explanation to the ground state energy and what is the energy so energy e phi as at alpha minimum is is the best explanation to e0 and phi of alpha minimum is the best explanation to psi 0 so of course uh, when we are looking at variational principle it is very important that what kind of trial function we are taking for example just to give you an idea suppose the psi 0 of course in this case i do not know uh, if a uh, hamiltonian is very complicated i do not know its solution suppose remember uh, my hamiltonian is the simple particle in a box uh, problem in that case psi 0 i know they are sine functions but suppose i would pretend that okay i do not know that they are sine function i would instead use suppose an exponential function Uh, for the trial function so i'll call that as e to the power alpha x or e to the power minus alpha x or suppose i consider it as a uh, some uh, polynomial and i call as x to the power alpha so these are my different trial functions of course if i make a choice of trial function i can always evaluate e phi corresponding to that trial function 
and minimize this trial function with respect to alpha. So, if I am thinking that my solution is supposed to be an exponential function with a positive exponent or a solution with the uh, solution should be an exponential function with a negative exponent or x to the power alpha. I do not know what value of alpha should be whether it is 1 or 2 or 1.5 or 1.7 or 2.9 I do not know. So, in that case what I would do is that I would simply calculate e phi which will be a function of alpha because I would integrate out all these x because these integrals will be uh, evaluated over x values. So, therefore, E the energy will be a function of alpha and I will minimize this energy uh, with respect to alpha and find the best value of alpha. So, the best value of alpha will give me the best explanation to the uh, to the true wave function and the best uh, value of alpha will give me the best approximation to the true ground state energy. Of course, if my choice is bad, my outcome will be bad. If my choice is good, I can get very good results from variational principles. So, it a lot depends on what is my uh, trial wave function. Okay. We will now uh, look at one example. The first example is uh, we will look at the variational principle, uh, how we can use variational principle to solve hydrogen atom, but you would say that okay, we have solved hydrogen atom exactly. So, that is actually the point. Let us consider an example where we can we know the exact solution and pretend that we do not know the solution and start with a different trial function and see where we can get. So, this is the Hamiltonian of hydrogen atom. So, this is the first uh, term the kinetic energy which is minus a square divided by 2 mu and the Laplacian term. Laplacian has some radial part and Legendrian term. So, uh, then I write the write this Hamiltonian in atomic unit. So, where you see h bar is gone mu the mass of electron uh, is, is gone and then the potential energy between the electron and nucleus. So, because this is hydrogen atom. So, we have one el electron and one nucleus and in atomic units this is simply one minus 1 over r. So, this is my Hamiltonian and in fact, I should remind you I know its exact solution. If you remember the exact solution for the ground state uh, wave function for hydrogen atom was some constant multiplied by e to the power minus z over a into r or essentially uh, uh, it was the, the true uh, ground state function was e to the some constant e to the power minus z a z over a multiplied by r. So, which is in, in case if I want to write it in the atomic unit some constant multiplied by e to the power minus r. So, this was a function of as to e to the power minus r, r was the distance between the electron and nucleus. So, this I, sh I, I know, uh, but what I would do now I would take a trial function, but this trial function I will say that okay, suppose I do not know that this function is e to the power minus r rather I will consider it some e to the power minus r square. So, you see that I am changing the functional form. So, instead of an exponential uh, the exponent as minus r I am considering it as minus r square, but what I have done is that I have given a uh, parameter alpha. So, that we can I can see what kind of alpha I am getting out of it. So, I know to begin with that this is a somewhat not a not a, a very good choice for for the wave function because the true wave function has a my e to the power minus r dependence and my dependence itself is, is not so correct. But let us see what we are getting. If I have defined my phi, I can always obtain this e phi which is I have one energy integral phi h phi in the phi in the bra and, and phi in the ket. If you were if you want to look at the uh, uh, the term in uh, integral form, this is written here. So remember my trial wave function. I am only considering the radial part. So that is no, no term in angular part. But just to uh, make it complete, so I can this integral will have terms with over r. So with an integral of r square dr, I have term with sin theta d, d theta and d phi. So, when I integrate these two terms, I will get 2 into 2 pi which gives me 4 pi multiplied by this uh, radial integral. Similarly, when I look at the overlap phi, phi of phi, uh, phi star phi, in that case again I am doing it for the angular part, I have 4 pi here multiplied by the radial term. So, since phi is e to the power minus alpha r square, phi star is also going to be same because this is a real function. So, phi star phi will become e to the power minus 2 alpha square 
minus 2 alpha r square multiplied by r square. So, all these integrals that you would find here will satisfy this form shown here. It would have x to the power 2 n e to the power minus b x square and in such a case we know how to evaluate these integrals by, by following this. So, given that we have this uh, two integrals, let us say if we use this relation we have this uh, outcome. Uh, you can do this uh, um, on your own, this is not very uh, difficult. So, I see that the first term over here gives me terms like this. Let us look what are there. Of course, when I am integrating, I am integrating over all values of r, theta and phi. So, therefore, the term that I am getting are, are constant except for this alpha. So, please note I have these alpha terms in this expression. Similarly, when I have phi star phi, I have I am integrating over all r theta phi. So, therefore, I am left with some constants multiplied by uh, some constants and alpha term. So, this integral is a function of alpha, this integral is a function of alpha. So, therefore, the energy value E phi is also a function of alpha and this is what the functional dependence of um, energy in terms of alpha looks like for this particular problem. Now, since I know that E phi depends on alpha, I simply obtain the first derivative of it with respect to alpha and then find out at for which value of alpha this equation holds good. And it turns out if you do it, alpha turns out to be 8 divided by 9 pi. Now, my trial wave function was e to the power minus alpha r square. So, this tells me what is the best solution that I would get for if I take my trial uh, function as a Gaussian function instead of a uh, e to the power minus r function, the answer comes is that the best uh, case scenario is that when you consider alpha as 8 by 9 pi. So, that will be the best approximate to the true solution when you make this guess function. So, let us see uh, when I put this value of alpha and calculate the energy, what do I get? I get the energy which is minus 0 0.424 atomic unit. But what is E0? In this case, see E0 is the ground state energy of hydrogen atom. So, in this case it would be uh, minus h, square, uh, h bar square divided by 2 mu a square z square divided by n square. This is the expression that we got from hydrogen atom solution. So, h bar is 1 mu mass of electron a Bohr's radius all these terms are 1 in, in atomic unit. So, therefore, I am left with minus 1 by 2 and z is the nu nuclear charge 1 n is 1 because I am considering the ground state. So, this energy turns out to be minus 0 0.5 atomic unit. So, this is the true energy, the exact energy that we know when we have we, because we have solved this problem exactly. But this energy we are getting minus 0 0.424 atomic unit when we are taking a trial function here. So, the trial function has brought my energy as close as it could and you can see the the uh, the, uh, the correlation between the two is not extremely uh, uh, satisfying, but not bad either. So, therefore, what we see is that even when we have a functional form of the wave function not so correct, we still can get to a good approximation uh, the uh, uh, an estimate of the ground state energy by using variational principle. But one thing that I should uh, make you aware of it is that in variational principle, even if my energy because see I am minimizing my energy so that to so as to go to the ground state energy. So, the energy for a trial function can sometimes be nicely reproduced by using a particular trial function, but the other properties of the system which depends on the wave function, but remember the wave function contains all the information about the system energy is one of the observable that is coming out of this system. So, the state of the system is given by phi which we are getting energy is one particular observable out of it. There are many other properties that we would be interested in uh, getting from the system. In those cases sometimes you would find that although energy is nicely reproduced by variational principle, the other properties of the system are not. So, this is when that is the case that that means, we have to question the trial wave function that we have 
uh, started with. So, when other properties are not evaluated, then we have to see that whether our trial function makes good sense given the, given the system is. So, therefore, variational principle in this approach requires a lot on, on the person who is doing this uh, calculation and how he chooses, how uh, one chooses this trial wave function, the functional form of the trial function. So, this becomes very much uh, dependent on, on the trial function, but now we would uh, use, uh, we would discuss another case where uh, to a great extent this choice that we are making uh, will be, uh, uh, will, will disappear and this is what the, uh, the topic of our uh, next discussion. The next point that we want to make is that how we can use variational principle where the trial function instead of calling it as e to the power minus alpha r square or some function with an alpha dependence, what we call is that if I define my trial function as a linear combination of some functions. So, remember when you are dealing, when you are trying to solve this Hamilton, uh, the problem of a uh, complicated system, we know for example, helium atom. Helium atom has one nucleus, two electrons. If you somehow dis, uh, remove one electron, make it uh, helium plus, it will represent uh, like a like a hydrogen atom. So therefore, helium atom, in a way, effectively speaking, uh, two hydrogen atoms uh, uh, fused together. So therefore, when I looking for the solution of hydro, uh, the solution for the helium atom, I would see that maybe the, it's, it would be a good idea if I can express the trial function of this helium atom as a linear combination of this complete set of functions that I have obtained as the solution of hydrogen atom. For example, so if I if I am interested in uh, this, if this is the Hamiltonian that I have. Uh, whose solution I do not know. In this case, what I am telling is that I can make this trial function as a linear combination of psi i's, where psi i's may be a set of uh, functions. We, we can sometimes use it as as known eigenfunction of a of a simpler system compared to the complicated system that we are dealing, or psi i's can be a set of functions that we are choosing. So, without losing general, uh, generality of this expression, we say that let us consider this phi the trial function not as a single function rather as a linear combination of several known functions. So, the known functions are psi i. So, I in, in this approximation I know psi i is what I do not know are the c i s or the coefficient with which I should stitch these psi i s together to get my phi. So, suppose I have this uh, description of the phi. So, I know that e phi is simply let us first evaluate uh, phi phi and while doing this let us say we are restricting our discussion to i equals 2 just just for the sake of simplicity but uh, we can generalize that that further so this is simply phi star uh, phi d tau. So, what is phi star? So, in this case uh, I can simply use the bracket notation. So, you see c 1 psi 1 plus c 2 uh, psi c 2 psi 2. This is in the, uh, the bra side. The ket has again same function. So, I can ex ex expand it as uh, several terms. So, here uh, so here the c 1 is in, in the bra side. So, I bring this c 1 star out. Here c 1 is ket. So, I bring this out. Uh, this is mere c 1. So, I have psi 1 psi 1 plus similarly I would do this as c 1 star c 2 psi 1 psi 2. So, this the first term in the bra side I am uh, uh, taking overlap of the uh, both the terms in the ket plus I have c 2 star c 1 psi 2 psi 1 plus c 2 star c 2 psi 2 psi 2. So, now you see 
I have this term C1 square. I call this term as the overlap of psi 1 with itself. So, of course, if psi 1 is, is one of these uh, known functions that I am starting with, if psi 1 is normalized, of course, this will become 1, but we will keep this S11 for a, for, for a general uh, explanation. So, then I look at this term. So, this term will be C2 star uh, C2 uh, square S22, which is the overlap of psi 2 with psi 2. So, this S is the overlap integral. This term over here shows me C1 star C2 S12 plus C2 star C1 S21. So, this S functions are the overlap function uh, integrals that we am getting. So, this is what I am getting from phi phi. Now, let us get So, similarly, when I uh, get this, I express this in the bra side c 1 psi 1 plus c 2 uh, psi 2, the Hamiltonian uh, uh, operator. So, I see when I, I, I can have now uh, terms where is where it would be c 1 star c 1 psi 1 h uh, psi 1 plus so, I am looking at C 1 with the other terms psi 1 C 1 star C 2 psi 1 the Hamiltonian psi 2. Similarly, now I am coming to the second term. So, C 2 star C 1 psi 2 the Hamiltonian psi 1 plus finally, C 2 star C 2 Now, if I uh, simplify this, this is uh, we know that when I re express this uh, uh, integral like this, I can say that this is the matrix element of this Hamiltonian operator when the corresponding to psi 1 and uh, psi 1 basis function. So, this I am calling as H11. So, these are the energy integrals. So, S are called the overlap integrals. and the h s i j h i j are called the energy integrals because here the operator is is, is hamiltonian so similarly i have c1 star c2 h12 plus c2 star c1 h21 plus c2 square h22 now, so H11, H12, H21, H22 all are in principle I can obtain them. Why? Because I know what are they? They are simply the matrix element of an operator, uh, Hamiltonian operator when the matrix element is psi 1, uh, the basis function is psi 1 or psi 2. Since I know psi 1 and psi 2 and I know the functional form of the Hamiltonian, so I can compute this uh, energy integrals either uh, analytically or, or if analytically it is not possible perhaps numerically through, through a computer program I can do that, but I will get this as, as some value. So, once I have this term you see the energy becomes E becomes uh, and you can write this expression over here this term and this term over here, then you would see that then you solve this equation and then something interesting that would come out. I am skipping that uh, part of the solution and I am writing down what you would get at the end. You would get when you uh, rewrite that expression, you would get something like this. Look here what we have done. What we have done here is that the previous equation we, would, we have re, uh, written in terms of uh, three uh, matrices here and then the multiplication of this is 0. So, this is another way of expressing the equation through secular determinants. So, now what you have let us find out whether we identify all these terms. 
we know what are this h11 so this is the energy integral corresponding to uh, basis functions of psi, uh, psi 1 and psi 1 h21 is the uh, energy integral corresponding to basis psi 2 and psi 1 and e uh, s2 s11 s22 uh, i'm sorry this should be h2 s22 s11 s21 s12 s22 they are all the overlap integrals what are c1 c2 the c1 and c 2s are the coefficients in our linear uh, linear combination. So, now what we have got here is that when we express our trial function phi as a linear combination of two functions, we have we are getting uh, a 2 by 2 uh, secular determinant whose solution we will have to find out. But if I take Uh, the trial wave function as a uh, linear combination of n number of functions. So, here instead of having a 2 by 2 determinant, I would actually have an n by n determinant. So, I can keep on changing the values of n and the solution of this equation, you know that I, if I can diagonalize this uh, term here, uh, this 2 by 2 uh, matrix here, the eigen values would actually come out as E since I have a 2 by 2 uh, matrix. So, therefore, when I diagonalize it, I will get two energy values. I will consider the lowest energy value and find out the eigen functions corresponding to that energy value and the eigen functions will be given as in terms of C 1 and C 2. So, by solving this equation, I would get E. In fact, I would get E 1 and E 2 and corresponding to E 1, I will get a C 1. So, C 1 1 and C 1 2 and corresponding to E 2, I will get C 2 1 and C 2 2. So, that means, once I know these coefficients, I can write down the corresponding wave functions, uh, corresponding wave function because I know this wave function is simply C 1 psi 1 plus C 2 psi 2. So, now this way what we are getting is that we are able to obtain this trial wave function in terms of C 1 and C 2. So, uh, as soon as we have the C 1 and C 2s, then we can write down our total wave function, because total trial wave function, because that trial function is the linear combination and the energy anyway comes out because by diagonalization. So, now this is 2 by 2, of course, we can do it by hand. Using computers, we can actually go for very large value of n for example, 1000, 10,000 um, are easily uh, doable uh, in, a, in a standard laptop that you may have or if I have further uh, like uh, even larger numbers close to a million or several millions, then we may we can have uh, several different techniques uh, to, to diagonalize those large matrices. But then the point is that as long as I have define this matrix, if I can diagonalize them, I will get the energies, I will get these coefficients and once I have them, I have the an explanation for the, the trial wave function phi and the energies. So, in this way, uh, we can obtain, we can use variational principle to get uh, an approximate solution of a, a complicated problem, where we can express the, our trial function as a linear combination of several known functions and the coefficients of this linear combinations as well as the energy would come out when we solve this n by n secular determinant that, that we uh, discussed in today's class. So, in next class, we will use uh, this uh, concept that expressing the trial uh, trial function as a linear combination of known functions for a uh, for a uh, molecular system and then we will see how we can use variational principle to obtain the approximate energy and the wave functions for that system that will be the matter that we will take up in next class thank you for your attention